Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Leveraging Artificial Intelligence and Bots with QuickBase, sponsored by Vail Sun. I'm Erica Porter, and I'll be your moderator today. Before we begin, I have a few announcements. Your participation is very important to us. We've designed this webinar to be interactive. To make the most of this presentation, we invite you to interact with TieBot. This bot was developed for this presentation to better demonstrate how bot technology works. You'll see the instructions on how to get registered on the screen now. Text VS to the number shown on the screen. This will bring back the bit.ly address on your text and allow you to get into the bot and interact with it there. All right. Uh, after the session, we'll also be sending an email out with the presentation and a copy of the slides, so be watching for that. Now let's move on to the presentation, Leveraging Artificial Intelligence and Bots with QuickBase. Presenting today's topic, we have Rich Crum and James Cosman, Managing Partners at Bailson, along with Ty Shoemake, Bailson CTO. Welcome, gentlemen. The floor is yours. Hi there. This is Rich Crum, uh, Managing Partner at Bailson, and we're really excited to talk about um, uh, artificial intelligence and bots with QuickBase. So we're going to kind of tie those three uh, aspects together. This is really um, a bit of a replay of a presentation we did it at the Empower Conference, the QuickBase Empower Conference, a couple of weeks ago that was uh, extraordinarily well received. And so we thought we'd go ahead and uh, re replay this and redo this and kind of go over it again for folks that uh, might not have had the opportunity to um, en enjoy and, and partake in the Miami Empower Conference. So as Eric, as Eric had mentioned, uh, I'll be three of us presenting today. I'm one of the managing partners. I'm um, going to kind of get things started with a bit of an overview. James going to kind of dive in a little bit more. And then uh, Ty Shoemake is going to be kind of the meat of the meat of the webinar and really the fun part of the webinar um, from there. So what we're, what we're hoping you might gain from this uh, webinar is a few things. One, kind of understanding what a little bit, some key concepts around AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and what are bots um, kind of a thing. It really is the, the, what we're trying to do is demystify, I guess we could call this demystifying AI and bots, and we're gonna try to kind of lay some foundation um, of what those things are and kind of move from there. Um, number two, gain a clear idea of how these technologies can be leveraged in your business with QuickBase. So if you've got a QuickBase and, or several QuickBases, where you might start being inspired to use bots. And then ideas of, uh, you know, how, how would you get started? What are the first steps you might think about to get, to get going? So the quick agenda, we'll talk about us a little bit. We'll try to get through that fairly quickly, but I think it is important you under, understand where we come from, um, why we should care about bots and AI, or why you should care about AI, AI and bots 101, a crash course. Um, James is gonna go over that. And uh, we're gonna talk about why QuickBase and AI are a perfect pairing as well. Um, some real life use cases, because um, we wanna make it real. You know, we're gonna bring in some examples. They might not be your examples, but, uh, they might kind of bring bring things to bring things to life a little bit, and then talk about some good places to start, and then just kind of sum up with some key takeaways. So about Vail Sun, um, we are a full service quick base provider, really um, uh, information integrators, uh, application creators that kind of thing in the cloud. Um, our, we really touch pretty much all industries. Um, we have a little bit of an emphasis in uh, these top five right here. Um, we've got also lots of applications and deep experience in logistics, IT services, legal services, other, other areas, but also applications across all of these project management, CRM, or a heavy compliance um, uh, application builder as well. Um, we do have a lot of planning applications, pull planning, those kinds of things in construction. So there's lots of different pieces and parts that we do from HR to marketing as well. So um, we're in Denver as our base, uh, base location. It's a sunny 90 degrees today here, uh, but we have also some folks in some other areas of the country and really not depending on geography to do, do our work with our partners. Um, we're really proud to be quick base solution providers. Um, we're 
partner of the year last year, people's choice of the year this year, basically the same, same kind of uh, accolades that we really appreciate. These are some of the folks we work with. Just a real quick slide on, we work with big, some big, big corporations, some departments and bigger companies, and then also have some, you know, really small businesses and medium sized companies and all over the board. And everybody's really treated, um, really treated the same by our teams. Who are we? We're a one-stop shop for application building and integrations. And we can, we have all kinds of ways we engage with, with our partner clients. Um, but we're, our expertise is in designing applications, um, being able to glean what the requirements are, what we really need, sift through that, go through workflow. It's really a big key to success. We've got great builders, expert builders, uh, decades of experience building applications and understanding what, what, what things can be done and what, what might be a little bit trickier and to get through all those hurdles. And extend QuickBase as well. Uh, there's other pieces that we have we can extend QuickBase with. There's um, other outside, outside ap applications and really we can integrate with just about everything. QuickBase has a, a very rich API. Um, we have tools to integrate into pretty much anything. And then we're also kind of bigger than builders and developers. We actually can help and enhance, you know, by helping with governance, um, a fractional development team. Because obviously once you get going with QuickBase, you want to keep going, um, as everybody, usually everybody finds out. Then we've got things like QB checkup. If you just need periodic checks of what's going on, what, what troubles you might be running into, we can kind of do those checkups as well. Here's a list of some of our major enhancers to QuickBase. Um, this is just really kind of showing that, you know, we really extend QuickBase. We've got some turbo turbocharged, you know, things like scheduler and Gantt and really a lot of drag and drop types of things. Qtranslate is in dozens of languages. We can quickly, um, you know, put up translators in QuickBase. Uh, but really what we're talking about today is to the right, it's Mailbot. That's what we're gonna be, be going into as far as enhancers. So why is this important? Let's, we're gonna get into the heart of the matter. Why is this important to you? Why is it important to your business, your department, or, or however you might be engaging in QuickBase? Um, so to step back, this is the impact that bots and AI are having to the technology industry. Um, most content management um, professionals will be using um, and bots, who's a content professional? Well, really, all of us that deal with content, QuickBase is a database full of content. So, um, specifically to content management professionals, um, it's going to be a lot of targeted support is already out there. I mean, we've all interacted with some level of bots or, or FAQs or help type systems, but it's other kinds of just fact finding, researching, understanding kinds of things um, for support. Um, Bots do guide, so a big portion of bots are now really guiding and, and playing, say, Sherpas through information and technology. So that's a pretty powerful statistic, too. Um, and then there's a lot of overlap in both as well. So 50% of uh, folks are planning on, on getting this going within the next year. Um, so that is, that is a very powerful statistic because the year is, next year is about six months away. So, um, it's, it's, it's happening. It's part of us. It's not a matter of if it's a matter of when. So it's great that you're thinking about doing this, um, cause it is another way to get at your content. Um, it's more powerful in, in many ways than reports, um, uh, depending on the circumstances or queries or emails. Um, and tech support right now is already adopted as we all probably have experienced it some, some way, shape or form. The foundation of this was really laid in the late eighties and nineties where there were studies by Stanford that said, when we interact with media and so media is sort of a generalistic term for technology or content. Um, we really think of media that we're, we're, we're being bombarded with as as has, having a personality or a persona. So to make this real, like our computers that we interact, we, you know, we have a relationship with our computer. Um, it's really, you know, in the nineties, there weren't cell phones. Um, we all kind of have that tied to our hip. So it really is that kind of a, a relationship. There's been movies made about it now. Um, 
but uh, so that's why bots can play a part in all of this as well. It can really kind of bring things to life and, and, and breathe life into things that you wouldn't normally think would need it. So I'm going to hand this over to James uh, Cosman, the managing partner of Bell Sun, and he's going to kind of start going into an overview of AI. Hi, good, good morning or afternoon, everybody. So um, we're going to have a little bit of fun with this and see what you already know and understand about artificial intelligence. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a test here. So the first question is, what is artificial intelligence? Is it, and you can put your answers in the chat if you want, is it a newfound intelligence possessed by somebody with a smartphone who can now do a Wikipedia lookup? B, technology that will eventually become self-aware and destroy the human race? Skynet? Or C, computer systems that are able to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence? This could be visual perception, speech recognition, decision making, and translation between languages. C, although arguably it is all of the above. So the next question is, what is machine learning? What do you guys know about that? Is it A, a term developers use to sound smart and get high paying jobs? B, two random words put together that somehow got popular on social media. C, an application of artificial intelligence, an application of AI or artificial intelligence that provides systems ability to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. I would say C, although arguably all of the above once again. And then our final kind of concept is what are bots? So is it A, those things that automatically comment off the wall stuff on my Facebook posts? B, what my kids constantly complain about when playing Fortnite? C, a computer program designed to simulate conversation with human users, especially over the internet? Or D, all of the above? So the answer is D on this one, all, all of the above. So there's good and bad applications for bots. We're going to talk about just the good ones. So to sum, sum that all up in plain English and how this relates to QuickBase is an AI-driven bot is an intelligent and lightweight user experience. So it's a way to engage with users um, that may never have seen QuickBase um, in a way that is interactive for them. Um, and easy, and hopefully the rest of the presentation brings that home. So let's talk about why AI and QuickBase are a perfect pairing. So, um, and hopefully QuickBase doesn't get upset about my liberties with the with the little QuickBase um, with with the QuickBase guy there the mascot, but QuickBase is really, really powerful because it allows process automation, um, it gives you a secure database, reporting, et cetera. You guys all know that about QuickBase. But where AI and bots come in and why it's really powerful, QuickBase, is from the user experience standpoint. So you may have people out in the field or um, that are maybe not necessarily formally attached with your organization or are not technology savvy, but everybody knows how to text. Everybody knows how to send text messages back and forth. So bots can be a really easy way to get information from people without them even knowing that they are interacting with software at that point. They feel like they're texting or they're being driven down a process flow. So if you get this, you, get, you tend to get better adoption for systems. It really starts to have game-changing workflows, like suddenly you have people giving you data into QuickBase that may have never done so otherwise. And it can be a competitive advantage if you're using it um, to, to automate sales or marketing. So, um, so just to give you some real life examples before Ty jumps into his demo extraordinaire of what this actually looks like in real life, you know, some of the things that we're seeing out there in the quick base world are sales chatbots where um, somebody, you know, 
puts in some puts in an email address and into a chat bot and it goes out and finds out a bunch of information about that prospect over the internet and then they can they can see it right there on their phone and then they click to add that as a lead in QuickBase with all of that information or um, support chat bots where people maybe your support team is working within QuickBase, but somebody is using a chat bot to chat back and forth with the support team on a support issue. Really common use case. Image recognition, which Ty's going to jump into in his demo. Um, we see it also with artificial intelligence driven scheduling. So you want to use artificial intelligence to find the best spots to put people in on a schedule based on lots of criteria. Um, one of our tools, Q Translate, is an example of artificial intelligence where you could actually translate all of QuickBase, um, you know, over like overlay different languages on QuickBase. And then, um, you know, there's some other sales and implementations that we're seeing. So with that, I'm going to um, hand it over to Ty, who's going to do the meat of the presentation and show you demos of how this actually looks and feels with, with QuickBase. Thanks, James and Rich. So let's get started. I'm really excited about chatbots and, and AI, as anybody who knows me uh, could probably attest. We're going to take a look at some use cases today, but before we do that, I want to make sure everybody had an opportunity to get TyBot. If you didn't, just follow the instructions on the screen. Text VS to 720-605-4013. I know everybody knows how to text. And it will send you back a link. Just click on that link and TyBot will be right there at your service. You'll have a, a lot richer experience during our demo if you can do that before we start. So I'll give you probably 15 seconds to finish that up if you need it. And we will continue on with our first use case, which is a very interesting use case. So we'll go ahead and get started. So demo one is visual AI. What we're basically doing here is we're identifying objects using a combination of a, a bot on our telephone, QuickBase, and a visual AI from Google. Our use case in this particular case is a Hollywood movie production company. They were having a problem managing props. As you can imagine during any, any movie, uh, a movie could probably have between 1,000 and, and 15 or 20,000 different props used within that movie, everything from an ashtray to a hat to a scarf to a pair of shoes. So the challenge was for people who are called prop masters to be able to identify these props when they see these props laying on a set and identify who, the, what prop it is, the model it is, what actual scenes in that particular film or movie it's there, that particular prop is going to be used in, who's responsible for that prop, where that prop should be sent back to the warehouse, etc. So basically, they wanted to be able, using their phone, to take a picture of that prop through our bot and be told everything about that particular prop. So they, they knew what to do with it and how to disposition it and how it needed to be used. Pretty interesting use case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click out of our little presentation here, and I'm going to go into TyBot. This is the same bot that you uh, hopefully have loaded on your phone. We'll start again. So basically, as Rich and James have said, this is a lightweight user interface. Uh, it's a direct interface to QuickBase. In other words, everything that you see and everything that you experience in the bot is being delivered through QuickBase using the bot, but it, it, it provides the user a very, uh, very clean, very minimalistic interface. Very, very easy to use and very familiar to most people because everybody texts. Everybody knows how to text. They do it all day long, every day long. 500 billion texts a day. So let's get started. Let's explore TyBot. This is a multi-purpose bot. Some bots do one particular thing. This bot does a number of things. And we built this bot for Empower. And it was to be used for Empower down in Miami. So as part of this, this particular bot, we wanted people to be able to see at a glance 
the weather in Miami. We wanted them to be able to visually identify stuff using visual AI. We wanted to in incorporate something called a cl custom classifier. The custom classifier is what we built for this particular project for the prop masters. And we'll talk about that and I'll, I'll demo that as well. We wanted to be able to, for people to learn what Bell Sun can do for them or offer them. We wanted them to be able to schedule a dream session or contact Veil Sun. As you can see, our bot was, was designed to enable many, many different uh, actions, user actions. Uh, and all the user has to do is just click a button and the bot takes it from there. In this particular example, we were asking the bot, what is the temperature in Miami? It's uh, right now it's 91 degrees outside. Feels like a sticky 98.5. And having been in Miami for Empower, it did feel like a sticky 98.5. Probably does today too. The next thing we wanted to be able to do was, was show off uh, visual AI. And what this is, is this is called a general classifier. Basically, this classifier was built to be able to identify those things that you can see in your office, at home, at school, just the, the, the things that you experience in your daily life. Everything from a cell phone to a keyboard to a mouse to a, a cup to a wallet. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, have TieBot identify something. And while I'm doing this on the screen, please feel free to do this with your cell phone using TieBot. You can do exactly the same thing I'm doing, and hopefully we'll come up with some great results. So I'm going to go into TieBot, and I'm going to go ahead and upload a picture because I'm on my computer, and I don't have pictures. I can't take pictures with, a, uh, with my computer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of a kitty, and I'm going to send that picture using TieBot to QuickPace. QuickPace will send that picture and request from our visual AI what that is, and our visual AI will come back and say, this is what I think it is, and QuickBase will tell our bot, okay, I know, it's a cat. So in this particular situation, it, uh, it was pretty, pretty good. Sometimes we could even get back something as specific as a tabby cat. Uh, it just really kind of depends on the mood of the, uh, of the AI, actually. Again, a general classifier. This will tell you that that's a cat. It doesn't do us a lot of good, though, in our prop example, because knowing that something is a hat doesn't help us understand what scenes that hat needs to be used in, what the model is, what warehouse it's from, who the prop master is. So we've got to create something called a custom classifier. We'll do that next. We'll, we'll explore a custom classifier. This particular classifier was built around the Mad Max movie. Essentially, what we did was we trained this classifier to recognize props used in the Mad Max movie. So, as you know, Mad Max was, was a bunch of steampunk stuff. So, basically, what we did was we trained this AI to recognize items that were used and there were steampunk items. So, I'm going to dig around on my PC and see if I can find one here. Let's go to my Z drive. We'll go to uh, JPEGs and we'll look at all these pictures. These images you see here were used to train our AI. I'm just going to grab one. Let's, let's grab a better one than that. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask our AI what this is. This is a prop that somebody found on set. Uh, there was not a, a, a tag or a label or anything on it, and they want to be able to identify it. So we're going to go ahead and send it to QuickBase. QuickBase is going to send it now to our, our custom classifier, and our custom classifier is going to say, this is what I think this is. And, and it was successful this time because it says it's a Gear Millennium Falcon. This was a gear from the original Millennium Falcon that was driven by Han Solo in Star Wars. You can see the stock number, you can see the weight, and the warehouse is Irvine. So th this, our, our custom classifier was able to very, very granularly identify this particular item. 
So let's do one more real quick. And what we'll do is we'll do a steampunk hat. So we'll go back to our images. We'll pull up our hat. We'll go in and take a look. Yeah, that's a good one. And as you can see, all of these images are against different backgrounds. That's how we train our AI to recognize against varying backgrounds in the, in the real world. So our AI is thinking. QuickBase has got the picture. And it tells us now that that is a hat steampunk 320. Again, a hat from the Mad Max movie Thunderdome. There's the stock number, the weight, and the warehouse is, is the LA warehouse. So hopefully you had the same experience. If you would like to do try out the custom classifier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the presentation again and let you pop in. And try it yourself. So go ahead and hit custom classifier. Take a quick picture of our steampunk gear. Within about uh, six or seven seconds, your classifier should come back and tell you that it is a steam a uh, Millennium Falcon gear. And you can do the same thing with our steampunk hat. Different picture, but uh, same hat. So go ahead and hit your custom classifier again, take a picture, and we will continue on while you're having fun doing that. So our second demo is a little different. This is a bot specific or bot pure demo. And essentially what this is, is a bot that's used by a remote workforce. We have a, a large beer and wine distributor in the Northeast in, in, in uh, Pennsylvania who also provides free tap service to their, their, their restaurants and their bars that they sell beer and wine to. In other words, these tap techs will come to a, re to a restaurant or a bar and go in and, and clean the, the tap lines and clean the taps and, and make sure that everything's working like it should so that the product dispensed by these taps is good quality beer. Everybody loves good quality beer. What they wanted to be able to do is they wanted to be able to track these services much more carefully and much more granularly. When did a, a uh, technician show? Uh, how long did it take to service? What did they do when they serviced? It was the person supervising that service from the customer side. Were they happy or pleased with that service? What grade would they give our, our tap tech on that service? They wanted to be able to capture all these things. So what we did was, and I'll pop out of this one more time, We'll go into another bot called TapTech. Again, same situation. We have a link that is sent to the technician. The technician clicks the link. It brings up our TapTech demo bot, and we continue on the process. So the first thing in the morning, I as a TapTech, I get in my car and I clock in. So now I'm clocked in. I've got all my tools in my car and my supplies and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to go straight from my house to my first stop. But I need to be able to see what are my stops today. So I'm going to pop in, and I'm going to take a look at all my stops. Now, all these stops came from QuickBase. This was the schedule that was created in QuickBase. Our bot went out to QuickBase pulled this information back, and then presented it using the bot back to the tap tech. So the tap tech didn't have to log into QuickBase. They didn't have to enter their creds. They didn't have to pull up a browser. They didn't have to do any of those kinds of things. They were able to do this with a single button press in a very lightweight user experience. So let's say our tap tech may be new on the job, or maybe Finn's Irish Pub is, is a new new customer for our, our, our distributor. He's going to click on Finn's Irish Pub, and he's going to be, begin service. He's going to say, okay, I'm headed there now. Our bot's going to tell him where Finn's is located. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to give him a reminder that uh, uh, the fobs require cleaning. A fob is, is a particular piece of equipment that only requires cleaning about every fourth uh, service. So QuickBase knew that this was the fourth service since the last cleaning. 
So it reminded our tap tech that the fobs require cleaning. So we'll begin our service. Now what that means is our bot has taken a snapshot of where our technician is using uh, geopositioning and the time of the service beginning. And now the clock is ticking and our, our, our technician is performing the service. When he or she is complete, we ask how many total lines were there? Now yeah, there were 12, okay. This information is being sent back to QuickBase each time we click. Total PSBs serviced, there are only four of those. Total lines cleaned, well, we cleaned all 12 this time because they were, they were pretty dirty. Any additional service notes? This is where the technician has an opportunity to say, uh, during the next service, we need to bring in part 3703 because uh, there's a crack down the side and I don't think it's gonna last until after, this, after the next service. So during the next service, bring this part with you. We'll say no this time. So what we'll do is we'll ask the, tech, the tap technician, the tap tech to take a picture of the tap installation sort of as a, just to, uh, to verify the service was done and to, to be able to catalog the, the sort of condition of the tap installation because there, there are always opportunities to make a tap installation better, cleaner, more tidy. And this is our opportunity to, to capture that into QuickBase. We'll just take a picture of anything and send it in there. And we'll send it. This would actually be a tap, but it's actually a hat. So at this point, our bot is asking the technician to give his phone to the customer. And the customer is given an opportunity to rate this draft tech service. We're going to say he did a great job. We give him five stars and ask for the email of the person giving the rating and their name. I should make. All right. Now, what's going to happen is the bot is going to send this information to QuickBase, and QuickBase is going to send a receipt to this person re as sort of a, a confirmation of the service. So we've closed the loop not only with QuickBase and the company, we've closed the loop with the customer as well. So there's there's no question as to when the service was done and, and who reviewed the service on the, on the part of the, the client. It's really a, a great lightweight way to really close the loop. And we continue on to our next stop, the quarry tap room. So that is essentially how we can manage a field workforce or a field service force using a very lightweight user experience provided by a bot, yet very, very, very connected to QuickBase at the same time. Okay, our next and final demo has to do with trucking. This use case was a very unique use case. We had a very large trucking company that has uh, a very large number of contract dump truck drivers. These drivers come and go. They have contracts that begin and end with this trucking company. But the trucking company wanted to be able to automate the dispatching process from QuickBase, provide dispatches, provide information that these truckers needed during the day to, to arrive safely and arrive on time with, with the right load to the right location. What we did was we took a very paper intensive and very manual process and completely uh, transformed it using QuickBase and using a very lightweight user experience for the trucker, the in-cab experience. The company did not want and could not install equipment in each cab, but every driver has a smartphone and every driver texts. We all do. Every do everybody does every day long, all day long. So what we created was a bot that allowed QuickBase and the dispatcher to dispatch trucks for trucks to report their status and for us to very, very clearly and cleanly manage that 
that the the rotation of the truck from load to dump and load to dump all day long. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a sec. So again, the driver simply receives a text, clicks the link in the text, and starts their day. So the first thing we could do is we can clock in. Okay, I'm on the clock now. I'll clock in. I have been clocked in. So what's my dump ticket look like for today? A dump ticket is typically uh, something that lasts an entire day. Uh, a truck will be assigned a particular dump ticket that will say, pick up 45 loads here, dump 45 loads there. So that'll be their dump ticket for the entire day. Now, the driver may or may not know what the, what the map, where the dump location is or where the, uh, the pickup location is, the load location. So we provide them a map. Another thing that we want to be able to do is, is provide them something called an approach template. You don't want loaded dump trucks running across uh, soft asphalt, new asphalt, roadbeds, unapproved uh, roads, and those kinds of things. You don't want them running over culverts. You don't want them running places that, that very heavy, dangerous dump trucks shouldn't be around schools. So what we do is we provide them what's called an approach template that says, this is your route in and out of the dump site. This is where you load. This is where you dump. There's one of these for the job, for the dump site, and there's one of those for the load site. So we're very, very, we're very capable now of e extreme precision in terms of providing our, our, our drivers the information they need to be safe and to be very efficient. We can allow them to clock in and clock out for fuel, meal, and maintenance breaks. We can give them the opportunity to give us emergency notifications if they have a flat or they have a, 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 situ an, a safety situation or something like that. We can also have dispatches from QuickBase in our maintenance department or our dispatch department, letting them know that there are such situations uh, along the way that they need to avoid. Perhaps there's ice on the Highway 19 between uh, exit 25 and exit 27. Please stay off that that particular stretch of road, or we're expecting an ice storm or a snowstorm or heavy rain or whatever, we can very quickly and very easily uh, communicate with our entire fleet almost instantaneously using our bot without having to make phone calls and, and get on uh, lengthy conversations. We could do it with literally a, uh, a button press. So. That concludes our, our three use cases and our, our three demonstrations. What I will do is now turn the uh, presentation back over to my compatriots here, and we will continue on and do a little bit of a wrap up. Okay, gentlemen. Great, so now we're gonna get into how to get started, you know, using AI and bots and just some thoughts around that. All right, so getting started. So some of the pre prerequisites might, across the board is a great idea. You might just have something you wanna to toy with or think about or do or implement with one of your quick bases or applications. Um, so there's really kind of three sort of avenues to go down. Um, we obviously do this for our clients and help help that interaction design and, 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 build, and build the bots and AI. Um, or we could do it together. There is um, doing parts of it together, learning, um, being a part of it, that's always, that's always a possibility. Or do it yourself. Um, these tools are available and usable, uh, but really to keep in mind, you know, it does take um, time and some advanced quick base developer knowledge and working with the APIs and, and, and things like that. Um, so we, we deal with all these combinations, obviously, um, and can help and have conversations around any of them. Um, none of that, you know, none of that is a, a chargeable situation. We just want, kind of want to get, get with you and understand uh, what you might want to do. 
So with that said, uh, we're obviously open to talk about those things. You want to call us, email us, but we have uh, also a concept called dream sessions where it's just kind of a safe environment where we get on together, we go through what your needs are, we talk about possible solutions, we brainstorm, all that kind of a thing. Um, it's a safe zone, it's a fun zone. We did this in power, we do this at Empower, we do this with um, folks that are just kind of thinking about things. It's just kind of like, well, let's just, get excited and, and, and understand what your, your roadblocks might be or what your ideas might be together and, and dream. So summing it all up, um, bots are here, you know, they're, they're already being used. They're becoming ubiquitous. Um, we're starting to run into them and you're only going to see more of them. So getting ahead of that curve, uh, is great. Even if you're, um, starting small. So QuickBase has, uh, the power to do this. Um, there is a technology to link up. QuickBase is very open-ended as far as its RESTful API. Um, we've got tools that link up with QuickBase. These are tools that are becoming easier to use, just like QuickBase always becomes easier to use and to develop on. Um, so it's fun to dream a little. It's, it's not out of the realm of possibility to do this stuff. It doesn't take some guru um, or anything like that. We're suddenly definitely help our clients with and build stuff for our clients. Um, and really kind of a key is to start simple. You know, you have to boil the ocean with this. These interactions can grow just like a person can grow or a dialogue can grow. Um, these can be built upon. It's very conducive to being, you know, built upon or changed or updated, but you can start with something small and branch out from there. So that really kind of can, concludes our webinar. Thanks for being here. It was great, you know, with 80 some people we had in our, our talk at, uh, in Miami. Um, we'll continue, continue to roll out this technology and have these conversations with our partners. And we certainly encourage any questions from you um, at this point. So I don't know if there's any questions out there, but we'd, we'd certainly be glad to, um, to talk about them. So with that said, if there, if there really is, you know, kind of no questions, we'll kind of open it up here for a second, but uh, hopefully we've covered everything, a little bit of an overview, but you obviously feel free to reach out to us at any time. And we're really excited about this. We're excited about this offering we have um, and the technology as it grows to really get the most out of your quick base. And we want to thank you guys again, Rich, James, and Ty for giving us a great presentation today. Uh, as a reminder to the audience, you'll be receiving a follow-up email with links to the on-demand presentation and a copy of the slides. For more information on tools and other resources offered by Veilsun, you can always visit our website at veilsun.com or reach out to Ty directly at T Shoemake, that's T-S-H-E-W-M-A-K-E at veilsun.com. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and close out our presentation today. Thanks again for joining us and have a great day.